Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today we're out here on the Willamette River with Eric Swanson. We're gonna be talking about springers, right buddy? Yes, we are. We're gonna go over the whole setup, how to rig and troll out here for Spring Chinook with a Triangle Flasher. But before we do, I gotta give a huge shout out to Nick Wax. Nick Wax is one of our partners and they're gonna actually be sponsoring this video. And they've given all you addicts out there a 25% discount code. 25% discount code. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. I brought this for you, Eric, so you awesome, can use it. Man. Thank I you. see you, your your Gore-Tex there is needing a little washing. It does. It does. It does. Have you used this stuff? It's seen a little bit of slime. I have never used that stuff. I'm uh, looking forward to it, dude. Dude, I I put it on. I've done, So I've done two of my jackets now. Right. And some of my bibs. Pretty awesome. You're going to be amazed. Like, I was like, does you know. It does it restore the fact like that the waterproofing like beads the water off? Dude, like it that? brings it back to like super beading off of the, yes. the Gore-Tex. And on top of that, it's just, it cleans it really well better right. than anything else you're going to be able to find to clean it. So Sweet. I've loved it, addicts. I really love it. Like I said, thanks again to Nick Wax for sponsoring this video. 25% off for all you addicts in the Sweet. link down below. Now, let's learn about some Spring Chinook. Absolutely. All right, dude, so let's just go, let's just start out with the setup. Yes. Like basic setup for someone to get out here. And as everyone knows, we love Okuma fishing tackle. It's what yes, we've we used for years. But a lot of this stuff Eric's gonna talk about, yes. just generalize it and you know, know that the lengths and stuff he's talking about, that's what you can, you can go after to get out there and get fishing. Absolutely. All right, guys, so like Marlon said, we really love these Akuma Guide Select Classic Rods. Trolling for Spring Chinook, you want a rod that's long enough and soft enough to when you're using bait, when the springer grabs and starts biting, that you have a soft enough rod to where the fish can take it without feeling the resistance of the rod and you can really let that rod load up. So anywhere from nine to 10 and a half foot is what I recommend. I run all the 10 and a half footers just because I have a big enough boat and those 10 and a half foot rods help everything kind of be spaced out. Next thing I want to talk about guys is a proper reel. So we love the low pro line counter Okuma Cold Waters. Um, having a line counter is super important. When you're in 20 feet of water, for example, you can really dial in how to find the bottom if you've never done it before. Go to 20 on the line counter, start lowering your rod tip. We'll talk a little bit about that in, here in the, uh, the upcoming episode. Um, but line counter, super important. Um, next thing, guys, is having the proper line. So I really love running 50 or 65 pound braid. There's a ton of different braid manufacturers out there. Um, so don't think you have to have one certain type, um, but just a, a good quality braid is very important. It's thin diameter, it cuts through the water really well, and you don't have to use a ton of weight to get to the bottom. Yeah, and one, and we all use Tough Line. That's like a standby. Yeah. You can get Tough Line in every single store around. Can. And it's it's super abrasion resistant. It's it's it just, a, it's kind of like the workhorse of braided lines out it there. Is. So Tough Line's a good choice Ooh. if you're looking for a good brand. Yeah. Lasts a long time, you don't have to worry about it getting nicked and dinged up and things like that. Yeah. So, all right guys, coming down here to the business end, I really oh wait, like one real quick thing I wanted yes. to, before you get to the business end. Yes. On the braid, do you like like a high vis or do you, what's your what's your preference I, on that? So I've gone back and forth multiple different times. Um, I like the high vis because I can see the line angle better and we know we're patrolling the right speed. If we get tangles, I can kind of see what's going on. Um, high vis is what I prefer. I've used the green. Um, I don't think it matters. Um, you know, I get questions all the time about do the fish see the high vis yellow? No, they don't. I've caught plenty of springers in five foot visibility water with, you know, bright high vis, yellow, blues, things like that. It so, just helps with your gear and seeing it and being able to know yeah, your place. Exactly, you know, trolling speed with Spring Chinook is so important. So having a high vis line so you can see your line angle of the water is probably the biggest benefit I get out of running some high vis braid. Cool. Cool. All right, guys, so coming down here, I always like to run a sliding weight dropper. That way, if I miss the fish and I get the weight in the net, the fish can still take off and it allows it to slide. So I always run about a 12 inch dropper. Out here when we're fishing for spring chinook, we always wanna be real close to the bottom. So that 12 inch weight dropper is really important and I always have it on a little swivel here so I can, you know, if I wanna run it shorter or, or, uh, or longer, I can switch them out down to a dual lock snap, down to a six bead Brad's bead chain. And then I run a 130 pound mono bumper and that helps us reduce tangles um, when we get snagged up we can always get our expensive short bus flashers back especially 
if you have a flasher that catches a lot of fish, last thing you want to do is lose the thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yep. And what's uh, what's the distance between there? 24 inches. 24 inches 24 on that bumper. Inches. Yep, and that little bit longer bumper leader helps that flasher catch a little bit of current. It keeps it off the bottom so you don't get snagged up as much. I learned that last year, so. And if you guys want to make, like you guys can make these bumpers or short bus, JT from short bus, yes. he makes them and sells them on his website. But this, this part right here is something that all of us in the Northwest has switched to over yes. the years. It's super, super important. Awesome. I see you also have this line lock on I here do. from VIP. You want to talk about that? Yes. what the benefit to that all thing right is. guys so if Sean can zoom in here what that VIP line lock does is it catches the eye of the bead chain and it reduces the line twist in your main line last thing we want to do is you know when you spool up your reel with this braid it's about 30 bucks so you definitely don't want to be kinking a bunch of line up and ruining your main line so it catches the eye just like that everything spins and does not spin your main line up so super important really really cool yes. cool thing for we VIP. run these with our 360s everything I run with these line locks, super important. So 24 inches of 130 pound mono, <clears throat> down to another Brad's six speed B chain to an oversized dual lock snap to our short bus flasher. JT comes up with a ton of really awesome Sweet colors. Sweet Abby on that one. Sweet Abby's a killer, <clears throat> killer. Always has been and probably always will be. So down to another dual lock snap with a ball bearing swivel. Then I'd like to run a dual lock snap here at the end guys. And what that allows me to do is I have a leader spool with all my pre-tied leaders. And on the end of my pre-tied leader, I have a small little swivel, just like that. And so what it allows me to do is, we get snagged, we catch a fish, and the, <clears throat> the line gets uh, frayed up a little bit. All I do is I open up that dual lock snap, slide in my new bead chain, just like that. Snap it shut. You don't have to tie, I can hand this to one of my clients and they can do it themselves. So it just makes everything a little bit more efficient. And then guys, leader length, all depends on water clarity. So out here now, we have a little bit of stained, dirty water. So I'm running about a four foot leader. If the water was cleaner, if we had four or five foot of visibility, I'd run about a six foot leader. So you have to match up leader length with water clarity. So what do you think on like, what's your poundage? What are you, what are you typically using for pound leader? Yeah, so I'm running anywhere from 20 to 30 pound leader down to two, three aught hooks when I'm running green label herring. And I'm gonna show you guys how to properly rig that here in a second. Do you like on your leader, do you like fluorocarbon or a monofilament? I like monofilament. Monofilament. Monofilament all the way. Um, you know, in the fall, when we see really clear water conditions, that's when I might switch over and run fluorocarbon. Uh, but generally here in the springtime, I'm running something, you know, a greenish uh, monofilament, so. Cool. All right, dude, so now we got all that covered. That's basically yes. rod, reel, line, leader, all your little counterparts added to that. Exactly. But now we're gonna throw some bait on these mustad hooks. Yes, we what, are. What are you gonna use? What are you doing here? What are you cutting? You wanna zoom in, yep. Sean, and show everyone what Eric does here. All right, guys, so 90% of the time when we're spring chinook fishing, I'm running a green label herring. And good quality herring, guys, is really important in this fishery because these fish, can, they can be kind of picky. So when you're choosing your bait in the store, Always look for eyes that aren't bloodshot and herring that the scales are all intact. You don't want, you know, beat up, um, you know, frozen and unthawed and then frozen unthawed herring. So make sure clear eyes, all the scales intact is going to ensure a good quality bait, which is going to up your odds in catching these fish. All right, guys. So the next thing we want to do here is cut the herring. So on our cutter here, we have the Chinook side and the silver or coho cut. I always like to use the Chinook side. What you want to do next, guys, is this is really important. Put the herring in put it belly up against the cutter. And what's really important guys is have a good sharp knife so you get a nice clean cut. And another important thing guys is you wanna do one smooth cut, just like that. You don't wanna sit here and hack it back and forth because you're gonna get a mushy bait with a very uneven edge. It's not gonna spin right. So once you cut it, take a look at it and make sure it looks decent because bait quality is really important. Next thing, I like to always remove the guts. So by that I just squeeze the herring just slightly Get the edge of your knife just on the edge of the guts and just pull them all out, toss them overboard, and that leaves a nice hollow cavity for the water to flow in. And the next thing, guys, is to vent it. So you go right in the butt, just like that, cut a little vent, and the water can come in and come out, and that'll make your bait last a little longer so it doesn't blow out. Water in, water out. Next thing, guys, <clears throat> is how we're gonna rig the herring with our hooks. So we have the top hook here and the bottom hook here. We take the bottom hook, I'm going to go through the low side of the herring, just like this. So what I like to do is I like to go about right in the middle, as deep as I can go. And what's important here 
is to ease that hook out. You don't want to blow the side of the bait out and rip a bunch of, you know, stomach lining and things out. So the cleaner and easier you pull that through, the better quality the bait's going to be. The most important thing about this whole setup, guys, is how to place your top hook. So like I said earlier, high side, spine, low side. So the herring wants to spin inwards. So what I like to do is I like to take my top hook, go about a quarter inch in, and I like to go from the high side down to the low side, just like that. All right, everyone, so that's start to finish how to rig this thing. Now we're gonna head out on the water and show you guys exactly how to fish it. Yes, we are. Alrighty guys, now that we got to the spot, let's talk about the proper weight selection for how to troll these herring and flashers uh, appropriately. So, your weight depends on depth and current speed. So since we have lower water conditions and we're in less than 20 feet of water, I like to run less than eight ounces. You know, you don't wanna use too heavy of legs because then you have to troll faster to get everything to lay out nicely. Um, so you just match up your weight to water depth and water current. So, weight's on there just like that. What I always encourage everybody to do, is put the bait in first. So we'll go bait, flasher, lead, drop everything in the water, reel up. Every single time, guys, even if you've done this before, reel up just to make sure that your stuff didn't get tangled. Make sure your herring is spinning perfectly. Just like that, you guys can see that it's not a big wobble. It's a nice tight spin. It's exactly what we're looking for. I'll show it to you guys one more time. So we'll put the bait in, Put the flasher in, put the lead in, always reel up. Make sure it didn't get tangled. Make sure your bait has a nice, tight spin to it. Just like that. Next thing, guys, is this is probably what I see people do um, wrong the most, is everybody wants to free spool down to the bottom. Well, you ever reel up and everything's in a big ball? Well, guess what? Your lead got wrapped around your leader and it all spun up. So, look at your depth finder. We're in 18 feet of water. What I always encourage everybody to do is do one pull at a time on your line counter here. Just like this. Nice and easy, don't free spool it. Nice and easy. The slower the better. Then what we'll do guys is we'll get to that 18. It's like this and we'll start lowering our rod tip. Let a little bit more line out and you'll feel that lead go. Fill on the bottom, you can see it in my rod tip. Stop, pick up, stop. 90% of these fish guys are within two feet of the bottom. So you always wanna make sure and have this right in the zone where those fish are gonna be at. Next thing flip it over and what we're looking for guys what I'm gauging is my line angle if my line angle is straight down it means I have too much weight on if my line angle is way out the back I have too uh, not enough weight on so just the right amount of weight where you can pick your rod up lower it right there where the fish are put it in the rod holder and the next most important thing guys is when you see a rod getting a bite it's gonna look something like this let the fish chew on it. They're literally trying to eat your bait. Do not grab it and take it away from them until that rod is buried in the water taking drag. So if you see a rod starting to get a bite, don't grab it, set the hook, let them chew on it. And if you're using the right hooks, we like to run mustad hooks. By the time that rod's pinned, those hooks are gonna be so buried in that fish's mouth that you don't have to set the hook. When you start setting the hook, you start breaking leaders, you start dislodging those hooks. So let them bury it, let them chew on it. The longer the better, pick it up start reeling. I like to run a, a pretty moderately light drag. That way the fish can take some line if they want to. And then, you know, if we need to tighten the drag, tighten it throughout the fight. So moderate drag, let the fish eat it. Use sharp hooks, good quality bait. It'll be successful. All right, addicts. Thanks again so much for tuning into these tutorials. Thanks again, Eric, for filming them. We Welcome. appreciate it. And all the addicts do as well. If you guys want to reward Eric, or you guys want to say thank you, just get down below on this link, book a trip with him, get out fishing yeah. with him. And thanks again, addicts. We appreciate it. We'll see you on the river. See you guys on the water.